Hi everyone, it's Ray with the education team from Spirly Do's Kit Club and today I'm going to be sharing with you how to make some flowers and this is based off of our April 2014 project kit and it's the DIY flower kit and this month we're featuring some pole ribbon and I'll show you how to make a really quick flower that's really pretty out of this and we also have the Marion Smith Bloom Impressions tool. This is really cool. We have some dies that are going with this and some fancy little middles. It's really fun to make. I'm not really into making my own flowers, but I have to say I was able to make something like this and something like this using this fabulous new tool. So first, I'm going to share with you how to make a flower out of this ribbon. So you get a yard in the kit and I've cut this up to where it's one foot and two foot. And all you have to do is find this piece right here and just be kind of gentle and pull it this way. And then do the same on this side. Put them together. And pull. So you've got this almost circle and you've got this pretty lace, or this pretty ribbon that you have on the inside, which is totally fine. You can either cut it off or incorporate it into your design. And then what you want to do is you want to glue the two ends together. And I'm going to use some square tape for that. Okay, so at this point, you have some options. You can either pull this pretty tight and make more of a dimensional flower or you can make it flat like this. I'm going to do a layered flat one. And then what I can do is I can just kind of fiddle around with it and make it however I want. It's fine how it is. You could slap a little flower in the middle to do that. It doesn't really go but you could put one of the flower centers in there. But I'm going to go ahead and make another layer. Oh, and just as an aside, this takes mists really well. We got some of the Radiant Rain in the kit this month and the Mediums add-on. And this is what it looks like. So pretty. It matches the kit so well. But for this one, I'm just going to do white. So I'm going to take my other part of my yard of ribbon and do the same exact thing. And so this one is a lot more flat. It's more of a perfect circle. And this one is bunched up, so it's just a matter of preference. You could leave them as they are, or you could layer them. I think I'm going to layer mine, and I think I'm going to put the flat one on the bottom because it'll just add some dimension and keep that fluffier one on the top. So I'll just glue these together. And now I have a flower. Really pretty. Moving on to the next part of the kit, we have the impression tool, and we also have some crepe paper. In the kit, you get some blue crepe paper, and this is supposed to be black, but it's kind of purpley. If it doesn't go with your design, you can go ahead and mist this. It takes mist really well. So what I've done is I've just made a bunch of different dies, because you have to put it through the die cut machine. So I just kind of sat there for a few minutes and did that. And I have, there's two dies that come, and you get a small petal, and a large petal. So what I've done is I've cut out both of the colors. So the die is actually a small rose, but there's so much that you can do with it. Here's one that I made, and all I did was put one layer of big petals and one layer of small petals, and I just made the little bowl and so even though it has some dimension, it would go really well onto a layout without it making it too bulky. And your dimension depends on a couple of things. It depends on what size you're going to start with. If you use a circle this size, you're going to get a flower about that size. You can add a lot more petals to this to make it more poofy, or you can make it somewhat flat like I did. If you use a smaller circle, you're going to get a bunchier flower. 
or you could just use the smaller petals. So to start out with, you are supposed to make your petals damp. And when I started doing this, I messed up a lot because I think I made them too wet. I don't know if it was just the crepe paper or if it's just me saturating it and not paying attention. But what I found best, and I did see this on the Marion Smith video, is if you just take a paper towel that's wet and put these on there and just make them damp all over, I think that works best. At least it does for the crepe paper. So I'm just going to dampen my paper towel. And I'm going to start with some of these blue petals. And I'm going to set it in here so it gets the biggest fold. So I want some of that part right there to be sticking out. And then I'm just going to push down and hold. And act like I'm screwing and unscrewing like a pill bottle or something. I'm going to take it out and let it dry. And I'll repeat that. Okay, so I have all the petals that I'm going to use for one flower. I have one layer of six of the small and two layers, six each in the layer for the larger one. So hopefully that will give me a very dimensional flower. So I'm just going to start using this little piece of paper right here that's been cut into a circle or punched. And I'm going to make my outside layer. And I'm going to take the stem part, oops, and just start putting it on here. Okay, so that's the first layer. I'm going to go back in and add some more. If you use cardstock or vellum, you'll get a more uniform look, but this crepe paper really gives it like a wild rose look. I think it's kind of neat. And so because I'm doing my inner layer now, I'm going to make these diagonal. So I've got these two right here. I'm not going to line my layers up to where I'm just kind of making them in the exact image. I'm going to put them in between. Now I'm going to add the smaller ones. Okay, so that's what it looks like with the three layers. And so I have some options now what I can do for my centers. And one of the options that I can use is to just use the Prima Sea and Pearl flower centers. And I'm not going to do that for this one. You could also take these and start wrapping them around each other to kind of make the inner bud of a rose. So I'm going to hold it like that for just a second, let it dry. with the bottom cut off it will sit better in the middle and now I have a pretty blue rose made of crepe paper so you can see you can get a lot of different variations of flowers with the same tool and the same dye it just depends it looks really great and when the, the other thing I like about this crepe paper is because you got it wet once it starts to dry and I'm not sure if the camera's gonna pick this up but what it does is that it starts to fade some of that blue out and it does the same thing with the purple too or the black so now you have a handmade rose and what I was thinking about is I have a lot of flat flowers and I know a lot of people have flower punches too and I have some of those but one of my flowers that I totally love are these Prima Hydrangeas they're pretty old and I have them in almost every color and they're flat 
and I don't really do a lot with them. I think they're pretty, but they're just kind of mundane, and I usually put middles in there. But I was messing around with it, and I was putting them inside of that Bloom Impressions tool, and I was able to come up with something like that. So I'll show you how I did that. And I've, now I've got this other little tiny rose made out of these hydrangeas. And so these are just a few of the different types of designs you can make with the flower add-on project. And I hope that you get one of these kits. And if you don't, you can go to the left-hand side of the screen at swirlyjuice.com and see if we have any left. I'm not sure if we will, but I know we have some of the Bloom Impressions tools on pre-order, or maybe they are already in the store. So thanks for watching.